this is my piano here. It's tucked away in my living room. Here's my puppers. Um, and this is an old piano from about 1908. So for all my fifth grade students, fourth grade students, um, this would have been made kind of during the heyday of ragtime and some other things like that. And, um, and actually they stopped making this type of piano in the 1920s, specifically when the stock market crashed and started the Great Depression. Um, it is mirrored walnut, so that means that starting here in the center line, it splits, uh, was cut, and it's a, a veneer over top of um, uh, another maple, I believe, is the other wood that's inside of it. And this was an old player piano, which means that a long time ago, there would have been a mechanism inside here that would have allowed the piano to actually play by itself. And it's really neat, um, kind of spooky, but you can see the keys and you can actually see them hit the wires up there, the strings. Um, and so that's one thing that makes it really neat is that secret compart uh, secret door that originally would have been able to see the mechanism here. But what makes it cool is, is that even while you're just playing, you can actually see the hammers move and that's always really neat when the mechanisms were pulled out of a lot of these um uh because they the idea of it being a player wasn't as popular anymore and they just converted them over but this one sounds really nice and it is actually you can see how tall it is here it is actually an upright grand so the type of piano that became uh stylish after was a lot shorter, maybe only about up to here. Um, and those had, do not sound as good because they don't have as long of a string. Now let me show you some other neat things about this. So this part here is protecting the keys. So when we lift it up, it's very heavy, excuse me. When we lift it up, we have all the keys are revealed. Um, and then we have this secret compartment here that would have been pulled down when you were using it as a player piano. There would have been several buttons here that you could push to control the volume. And then this was a button for the tempo of the piece that you were playing. And then these um, were the insets to make sure that you didn't hit those particular pieces when you closed it. So um, there's also another really cool part about this is this really neat secret compartment down here so this door here but the door does not open um, and this would have been to get at some of the repair mechanisms but the door doesn't open because you have to use the secret lever so once we pull the secret lever the door opens just like Indiana Jones uh, this was a favorite hiding place when I was a kid to uh, stash some stuff Although right now it looks like all there is in there is dust and dirt. And, oh, there is something. Let's see what that is. Oh, piece of tape. Mm, trash. Yeah, nothing interesting in there now. All right. Close the secret door. These pedals operate everything. So for this would have been connected to uh, the player mechanism and the, the actual player mechanism itself would have come out of those doors and it had been two pedals that you would have pushed to operate it. So that is my beautiful player piano. And uh, now I'll play it for you a little bit so you can hear how it sounds. theme I'd like to show you this um, this is a piece of music from the 1600s and um, they would have written all the music onto these huge 
pieces of uh, vellum and um, they would have written one huge copy for all of the orchestra or all of the choir, excuse me, to sing. And it's written in these, these things called nooms, which were the ancestor of our notes. As you can see, um, the cluster, how tight they are together was faster notes. And these would have been left a little bit longer. And you can kind of see the little beginnings of how maybe stems and things and, and, and uh, bar lines. But uh, the bar lines themselves were really more of the end of a sentence. So we can see here, this is the end of a sentence and then it's beginning a new sentence. And um, these would have been sung in church and the whole choir just read one copy because copying things was very expensive. Um, paper was very expensive. So this is all hand inked. You can see there, and you can see that the uh, ink from the other side of the page is slowly eating through. It is in archival um, preser preservation stati uh, state right now, but um, so it shouldn't get much worse than it is right now, but you can't control the ink. Um, the acids that would be in the ink actually come into the paper. Um, these books actually are taken apart on purpose to preserve them because if they were left as a book, then the pages would actually kind of harm each other uh, without proper protection and the book would be just incredibly expensive. So they pull them apart on purpose and sell the individual pages or preserve parts of the individual, individual pages like in a museum or something like that. This is all Latin and uh, it is a love song it's not, has nothing to do with religion. In fact, in church in the 1600s, they were using uh, that as sort of musical time. Uh, so this, uh, Sergei Pro Per Amica Mia for Mia Mia, that basically be, is like, hey baby, listen up, I got something to say. So it's like, uh, rise up and lift your uh, friendliness to me. Um, then it keeps going. It's like, um, listen to me, uh, and transfer your, me, your affection, uh, your ears, hear me, um, and see me and incline your ear to me. So it's basically like, you know, Hey, what's up uh, in Latin. So, so that's the cool piece of music. And I do have it mounted in a clear frame. So you can actually see the back as well. There's the back as well.